apologies for not putting a video up last week, but it's been absolute bedlam here. Some of you might know from my Facebook page that our back room ceiling fell in um, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's been it's been a nightmare. Anyway, all's well. We've had the builders in this week, and the ceiling's all back up, and everything's hunky dory. But this week and uh, last weekend was sort of full of lots of hammering and banging so uh, Ensa couldn't record a video but anyway here we go and I just want to do a quick video over here in Photoshop and just give you a little taster of some of the things that I'm going to be covering in a Photoshop uh, course a little bit later on um, actually it's what November now so it's probably going to be sort of January February by the time I get it finished but anyway we've got this um, rather rubbishy shot of a oak tree against a what a weak cl uh, weak blue sky with uh, some cirrus clouds in it and uh, we're going to take it from this basically to that and we're not going to use a single luminosity mask or anything fancy like that we're just going to do this with the power of blend it now, anybody who's bought my sharpening video training site, uh, title will, towards the latter 20% of the lessons, have become very much aware of the power of the layer styles blend if sliders. And uh, in the um, sharpening tutorial training videos, the blend if sliders were used to distribute let's say advanced sharpening techniques such as um, the derivatives of high pass filtration but really and truly blend if and the blend if commands and i'll just open up the blend if commands so we know what we're talking about these things here are possibly the most or one of the most powerful facilities that you've got inside photoshop and nobody ever goes anywhere near them. I don't know why, but well, there you go. So, without any further ado, um, I'm just going to delete all these layers here. And we will start again. And I want to keep uh, an extra layer so I can have a before shot um, to revert back to. But I'm not really bothered about that. We're just going to be working with these two layers here. And if I obviously turn both layers off, we've got the usual grey and white Photoshop empty document um, checkerboard. And if I turn this top layer on, there we can see our image. And if I go and grab my eraser tool and I erase some of that image, and then I go and turn this second layer on down here, now it looks like there's nothing happened doesn't it it's basically because we are seeing this background copy layer through the erased holes in the background copy two layer anyway um let's uh, just stop that and uh, we'll go and get on so if we come to the end or the blank end of a layer and we just double tap we will get up our layer styles dialog box and blend if consists of this layer meaning the layer that we're working on the underlying layer which is this one and anything else that's underneath all we're going to be concerned with in this lesson is this layer blend if sliders and we can blend if Grey, red, green, or blue. Now, the blue one's going to be quite interesting to us here because if I just go and click cancel a moment, what I want to do is I want to make changes to both the tree and the greens in the hedge, and I also want to make separate, different changes to the sky. So what I'm going to do is keep the tree the same brightness, but I'm going to shift its saturation a little bit, and I'm going to shift its hue a little bit. 
and make it look a little bit faux autumn yeah so we're just going to warm the greens up in the image just a little bit but we're going to saturate the sky and darken the sky so the end of it so the image has more visual depth and we're not going to be doing this in Lightroom because we can't and we're not going to be doing this in Photoshop with luminosity masks because it's too much faffing around especially when you see what we can do with Blend F. So how do I start to facilitate the changes I've just described? The first thing I want to do is to basically remove the sky from this top layer here and if I double click and I get up the blend if sliders now what this is these sliders are saying is we've got these a dark arrow here or a dark pointer and a highlights pointer so this is highlights this is shadows and if I just move this out of the way a little bit if I move this highlight slider to the left you can now start to see that I am removing the lighter tones of the image which happen to be for the most part sky but really and truly this is based on overall shade of grey I actually want to key in or dial in with a little bit more accuracy really on this image because if I, w if I try to remove grey tones I'm going to be removing tones from the greens as well which I don't want to do so what we're going to do is actually switch out to the blue channel but just so as you understand what's going on we'll put this back to all the way over to the right hand side this is saying that on this layer I can see every tonal range or tonal value from 255 all the way to zero so that's why I can't see anything underneath. Now, if I move this slider to the left, it's now telling me that I can see every tone in this image from 202 to zero. But everything above 202 has disappeared. Similarly, if I bring in the shadow slider, I can now see everything in this image from 32 to 202 but everything from 255 to 203 has been removed and everything from 31 all the way to zero has been removed as well and the thing is if we hold the alt key down because you see this boundary or this cutoff point here and here are hard so if I hold the Alt key down and I split off the sides of the pointers or slider indicators like that, then I'm getting a feather between these two points here. So now on the highlights end, I can see everything from 193 down to 43. I've got a blend of 193 to 205 and 43 down to 32 at this end and then everything or I shouldn't say a blend I should say a feather and then from 31 down to 0 and 206 up to 255 it's been removed so what I'm doing is I'm instead of having a hard cut off I've got a feathered cut off so let's take these sliders all the way back to where they're supposed to be and instead of trying to remove the sky with the grey sliders we'll go to the blue sliders and I'm going to just grab the blue highlight slider for this working layer this one and I'm going to move it down to probably around 170 475 so I've just got these little bits left and then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to split it off and I'm going to take this quite a long way down and we'll probably leave it around 90, 93, 95 and we'll click OK. So if I now turn this underlying layer on 
now we've got the original image back haven't we but the only thing is the tree and the sky are on this middle layer here but we've also got the tree separate on this top layer so if i come into this background layer now make it the active layer and make it visible and i get now go to my dodge burn tool and i select midtones exposure 45 percent so we're going to darken the midtones off i'll make my brush a bit bigger and we'll just with a nice feathery brush we will just come and paint all the way across the sky in nice long soft strokes like that get all the way to the top we'll lift and then we'll repeat it coming down rather like that I'll just maybe give one pass along the bottom there we go so now we've gone from there this single image to there and now what I'm going to do is come back to this top layer again and I'm going to just pull up a hue saturation adjustment I'm going to hold the alt key down and hover over the junction between the uh, hue saturation adjustment layer and our I'm going to say masked layer but it's not a masked layer it's a blend if layer isn't it and all we'll do is just warm the saturation up i say warm the saturation we'll increase the saturation to not too much to about plus five and then we'll take the hue probably down to minus nine and make it a little bit on the orange side and just as a final touch we will go and change the blend mode of this hue saturation layer from normal and we'll go and put it in color okay so that saves the risk of any luminance changes taking place so it's a just basically it's a color adjustment so we put it in the color blend mode okay so let's just go and have a look at the image at 100 percent and look at that it's perfect and you couldn't get as perfect a result as that by utilizing a mask because you've got to cope with the edges of the mask so blend it wow these sliders are so so powerful and yet nobody ever uses them and what we've done here is we just scratched the absolute veneer of the surface of the blendeth potential okay so i hope you enjoyed that quick video i hope it's given you some food for thought and uh, i shall see you again in the next one so until then to room and uh, i'll see you soon